Hello everyone. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about extensor carpi ulnaris strains. So this is a common cause of ulnar sided wrist pain. It's something that you know everybody should be able to uh, examine, diagnose, and treat. But there's a lot of causes for pain on that side of the wrist. So the extensor carpi ulnaris is just one. Uh, so I want to show you how to, to examine that and treat that more efficiently. And it's pretty simple. It's just a one or two needle uh, technique and it's very effective. So let me demonstrate how we do that. All right, some physical exam tips that are specific for the ECU, uh, extensor carpi ulnaris. So um, you're always gonna check range of motion. So you're always gonna start with, you know, elbow flexion and extension, wrist extension, flexion, ulnar deviation, radial deviation, supination, pronation. Um, but with this particular muscle, what you're gonna find typically is the patient may have pain when they extend the wrist and ulnar deviate. So that's kind of the hallmark movements that would cause pain in this muscle. But it's not limited to that. I see patients have pain with wrist flexion and so forth. But uh, if wrist extension and ulnar deviation cause pain over here, that's a sign that this particular muscle or tendon has some issue. Another thing that you might find through the range of motion part of the exam is that the patient has pain with supination. And what's interesting about this is when the forearm is in a neutral position or in a pronated position, the tendon is in a straight line as it crosses the wrist. But once you supinate, it takes a 30 degree angle past the ulnar styloid. So there's a little more torque or tension on the tendon in this particular position. So for some patients, just holding the hand like this can reproduce the pain. So that would be another tip that, okay, you would think maybe the ECU is involved. All right, a pretty good test for the ECU is the ECU synergy test. And basically what you do is you just have the patient place their palm facing them. And as the provider, you're gonna wrap your fingers around the thumb and middle finger. And you're gonna have the patient extend their thumb, moving it in a radial direction against the pressure of your fingers. And what this does is it puts a lot of stress on the ECU tendon based on the idea of synergy. So whenever you move the thumb in extension, the ECU is contracting. So if the thumb was unopposed, you know, the extensors of the thumb would pull the wrist into radial deviation. And so the ECU contracts on the opposite side as an antagonist to keep the wrist neutral. Otherwise, every time you moved your thumb or tried to do thumbs up, you wouldn't be able to control your wrist. So the ECU provides that stability. So we're using that mechanism here as a test by having the patient push their thumb into extension that is resisted to stress the ECU tendon. And if a patient has pain, around SI5 area at the ECU tendon, that'd be a positive test. Um, this test, I haven't seen too much literature about sensitivity or specificity, but what I can say is, you know, what I observed in the clinic is that it's not too sensitive, meaning that just because the test negative, it doesn't really rule out the possibility that there's an ECU problem or trigger points in that particular muscle. But if the test is positive, then it's very likely that there's a problem with the ECU tendon. And I haven't seen this be a positive test yet on a patient that did not have a true problem or pathology at the ECU tendon. So that'd be something to just keep in mind. That's just anecdotal, something I've observed, but I haven't seen the research on that. Okay, so what we're going to do is isolate the trigger points in the extensor carpi ulnaris muscle. And if you can treat that and take the tension off the muscle, that can indirectly take tension off of the tendon, and this is a very effective technique. So where is the trigger points of the extensor carpi ulnaris? A good way to find it is to divide the wrist to the elbow into thirds. And so you'll be about four sun down from the elbow, and that will be an area that you can start digging for trigger points. And the trigger points in this muscle can be more proximal, up as high as three sun, or even down as low as five sun, so it's a region and you really have to palpate this area well to isolate it. What's tricky is this muscle is not very pliable. You know, you can't really feel for nodules or twitch responses as easily as some of the other extensors. So what you wanna do on this muscle is when you find that muscle, you wanna press it down into the ulna. And you wanna basically squish the muscle into the bone to reproduce pain referral down to the wrist. And what you're gonna to have to do is support your thumb 
and hold that pressure down for a few seconds and get feedback from the patient to see if they are indeed feeling pain down towards the wrist. Okay, so let's say we've isolated the trigger point here. There's a couple ways to needle it. So I've already prepped the area for needling. And you can go with the muscle fiber is what I'd recommend to begin with, which would be basically needling in the direction of the wrist. So an oblique insertion, like so. And then you would just use a very gentle technique until the patient feels that pain referral go down towards the wrist. And then if I was to stimulate this point, just for demonstration purposes, you should see the muscle contract and you're going to get ulnar deviation of the wrist. Let's turn that up just a tad so you can see. So I'm right on that muscle and there's another technique you can use as well which is to go cross fiber. Let me demonstrate that next. Okay, on some stubborn cases, going with the muscle fiber may not be strong enough, and then you can use a cross fiber approach. So the same thing, you would try to isolate that trigger point, and you would now needle towards the ulna. And this is much easier to get twitch responses in this muscle. It's much stronger, and patients will feel more sore, but for some people, that's what they need. So, you know, I usually reserve that as a last resort if the other method's not working. And then again, let me just demonstrate, if I stimulate this point, you should see again ulnar deviation of the wrist. Turn it up just a tad again. Okay, so that's a very easy technique for addressing this muscle. Sometimes the trigger points will be stretched out over a period of a couple sun, and then you can use two needles to cover that area. And so that'd be your one or two needle uh, technique for treating ulnar sided wrist pain. All right, in summary, extensor carpi ulnaris strains are very common. Uh, some literature says they're the second leading cause of wrist pain in sporting activities. Um, you're going to see this a lot with RSIs, which is repetitive strain injuries, you know, keyboarding, mousing with the wrist ulnar deviated. Right, so you want to address the, the root cause, which may be ergonomics, it may be form when it comes to exercise or sporting activities, but if you can you know, help the patient keep a neutral wrist position and be efficient with that particular movement um, and provide the treatment that we just demonstrated, usually the results are pretty consistent. Um, so hopefully that works out. Um, remember too that this muscle gets sore pretty easily, so you know, the first session or two, you know, tread lightly would be my recommendation and then you can always turn up the volume as far as the intensity of needling goes at uh, future visits. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.